Irma strengthens to a Category 5 hurricane as it keeps moving towards Florida. What the governor is doing now to make sure we are prepared. Came for a couple supplies and then realized that there's a high demand for water in there. People are going crazy just trying to get a couple things loaded into their cart. A rush on supplies. People across the Sun Coast make a run for water and food. Plus, the ever-climbing gas prices. How high they're expected to go with the threat of Irma. Your Suncoast News starts now. Live from our studios on Florida's Suncoast, this is ABC 7 News at 5. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Good evening, I'm Haley Wilgus. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Our top story, of course, Hurricane Irma. It's now the most powerful storm ever recorded in the Atlantic Ocean. The National Hurricane Center says the Category 5 storm now has winds up to 185 miles an hour as it moves towards the Leeward Islands of the Northeast Caribbean and Florida and the Sun Coast are potential uh, targets for this storm. We'll have to wait and see, but here's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with our first alert forecast and the latest track on Irma. That satellite image that you just saw, the loop, uh, was from the GOES-16, and you can see how interesting that eye is. It's about 30 miles in diameter. The thing to note on this storm is the symmetry. Uh, look how symmetrical it is right now. It is a major, obviously, Category 5 storm, the strongest, as Haley said, in the Atlantic Basin in the modern era. Obviously, we didn't have planes and satellites back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. There could have been stronger ones, but however, this is in the modern era, and it is moving off toward the northern Leeward Islands at this point. This system continues to expand its wind field. That's one thing to note. It's not going to be like a chart and or and for that matter an Andrew. It's going to have a large wind field if it does not move over Cuba and there's a chance it could. Here are the latest uh, coordinates and uh, the wind speed from the National Hurricane Center as of 5 o'clock. They put out these main full-blown uh, forecasts uh, at 5 o'clock in the uh, evening, then again at 11 o'clock at night, then again another one at 5 a.m. and then 11 in the morning. We get intermediates uh, at uh, 8 o'clock in the evening, so we'll have another one coming up at 8, but it won't have much change. It's moving to the west at 15. The pressure is at 926 millibars, and the forecast path and track really haven't changed all that much. Again, moving through the northern Leeward Islands and then brushing the Dominican Republic after it moves through very close to Puerto Rico and the U.S. British Virgin Islands. And then, as you see, the intensity on the center line uh, stays at a Category 4. But if it were to shift south on this line, and it could, it would move right over Cuba, the eastern tip, and stay over Cuba, and it gets very close on day four. Winds at this point expected to be 145, but the wind speed forecast with hurricanes uh, is very, very uh, suspect. Again, at this point, and the Hurricane Center admits that. And you'll notice the entire cone includes our area. I'll jump back to that uh, graph again, showing that you the system 185 on our winds with gusts up to 200 at this point. And there could be a little bit further strengthening uh, as it makes its way off to the west. You can see all of South Florida in that cone of uncertainty. By the way, you've, a lot of people focus on just one model in this middle portion. Don't want you to. I want you to realize that it could be here or it could be all the way south off the western tip of Cuba on day five. So there's still, and what this should tell you, is a lot of uncertainty as to where this storm is going to go. So don't look at those forecast models, one model, and say, yeah, it looks like it's coming here or there. There's a lot of change. But for one thing, you'll notice that all the models do this northward turn. It's a matter of when this trough of low pressure moves over the eastern United States and how strong it is will determine when that turn to the north occurs. And right now, it will be around the periphery of an area of high pressure, which has been driving it off toward the west and northwest. Now, again, uh, some of the models recently have shifted to the east again, a flip-flop, so to speak. The Euro, by the way, yesterday was right over Miami at this time. Today, it's right over, again, looks like Naples and uh, Fort Myers. So it's shifted that far in just one day, and it's going to continue to do that shift. There's a chance the storm could go right over the mountainous terrain of Cuba, too, and that would diminish its intensity considerably from a Category 4, possibly even down to a Category 1 if it stays over the mountains long enough. So we have that also to look at. This is the trough of low pressure right there. It's through Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana and Ohio. That continues to sink southward right now, and that is going to be the driving force as to where Irma is going to go in the future. So we'll keep an eye on Irma. We have Jose behind Irma. That is a tropical storm, and we have a newly formed tropical depression in the southwest Gulf of Mexico. So lots going on. We'll talk more about these storms in just a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. Governor Scott is requesting help from the federal government in preparation for Irma. Scott is requesting that the President Trump declare a pre-landfall emergency for the state so we can have more resources and assistance. 100 members of the Our Florida Army and Air National Guard have already been activated to help prepare for the storm. 
All 7,000 Guard members will report for duty on Friday. 13 helicopters and more than 1,000 tactical trucks are on standby now. And Governor Scott says all search and rescue teams with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission that were deployed to Texas have returned to Florida or are in the process of coming back. But again, the governor's main message is for everyone to be prepared for the worst. Florida is known for um, uh, preparing and doing a great job with uh, disasters. We have no idea what's in store. We all have to pray for the best. Uh, hope, you know, the, the hope would be that this thing would dissipate and just go out into the Atlantic. But we've got to prepare for the, uh, for the worst. As Irma moves uh, potentially towards Florida, the possibility of evacuations grows by the hour. In the Florida Keys, the Monroe County Emergency Operations Center has activated and might issue a mandatory tourist evacuation for tomorrow morning and a resident evacuation for Thursday morning. Now, with Irma threatening the Sun Coast, lots of people are preparing by stocking up on hurricane supplies. Many of those essential items like bottled water and food flying off the shelves. ABC 7's Dwayne Lindo is joining us live at Home Depot in Sarasota with an update on how the supplies are there. Dwayne. Well, Scott and Haley, since I arrived, a stream of people have been walking up and down the aisles looking for certain items, only to find empty shelves in some cases. It's a mad dash at the local Home Depot for, well, everything. Plywood, flashlights, batteries, toilet paper, everything that I was told that I need. Lara Putnam is a new resident on the Sun Coast. Born and raised in Minnesota, she's never been through anything like this before. I would not have known what to do. I mean, I was watching the news. It was getting scary today. The shelf of plywood was cleared out within a matter of hours. Items such as batteries, flashlights, tape, and containers going fast. Their generators flew off the shelves as quick as they went up. Replenishing products as quick as they sell. Home Depot assistant manager Eric Thayer says the recent heavy foot traffic is an indication that many are scared and want to be prepared. He expects an increase in customers within the next few days. We've increased our staffing potential for Home Depot employees, allowing the time and the, the energy and the capacity to service the customers. Many customers that are here have already prepared for the essentials. We do have water at home and I think I have enough food and I'm making sure we do have our medications. Meanwhile, at a nearby Walmart, one shopper getting a few items. We came for a couple supplies and then realized that there's a high demand for water in there. People are going crazy just trying to get a couple things loaded into their cart. And was lucky enough to leave the store with a few cases of water. Like they just came out with two pallets. They were probably gone in like a minute. According to Thayer, it's all about making the time to be prepared and not panicking when an item may be gone. Uh, we want to be up front and explain to our customers that these are items that are replenished very quickly. Now, when I spoke with a manager, he assured me shipments of supplies were not only coming in today, but throughout the week as well. Reporting live in Sarasota, Dwayne Lindo, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Dwayne. And it's not just here on the Suncoast. People across the state are rushing out to stores to stock up on supplies. Take a look at this video of shoppers rushing to get bottles of water and some other items at a Publix grocery store in Miami earlier today. The lines were quite long and a lot of empty shelves. But as mentioned, they will most likely be restocked, so check back. Some stores, of course, already selling out of those supplies. All of these empty shelves were seen at a grocery store in Stewart, Florida. And we will keep you updated on the supplies here on the Sun Coast. Gas prices have gone up in the past week because of Hurricane Harvey. And now with the threat of Irma, they will likely keep climbing. According to AAA, the cost of a gallon of gas in, in Florida right now is $2.64. That's the highest price in the state in more than two years. Refineries in Texas and Louisiana that were closed due to Harvey are now beginning to move gas again. But don't expect to see prices drop anytime soon. Also today, in preparation of Irma, Governor Scott has suspended tolls across the entire state of Florida so people can better prepare for the storm, get hurricane supplies, and quickly and safely evacuate when and if necessary. Not having to pay tolls will be a big help for people on the Sun Coast who are already choosing to leave Florida ahead of Hurricane Irma. For those living in mobile homes or houses without hurricane-proof window shutters, emergency management says the best option may be to evacuate. Some have already started that journey heading north, or many are using I-75 to get out of the state. But local officials say with the interstate will become a parking lot as we get closer to the weekend. 
we have State Road 64, 62, 70, 72. Those all go east and they connect the northbound routes. Emergency management says you don't have to travel hundreds of miles to be safe during the storm. Just make sure you're a safe distance away from the shoreline and out of designated evacuation zones and do stay inside a secure building. And taking a look at how traffic is moving right now, we are not seeing any problems on the Sun Coast, which is great news. North and southbound lanes of I-75, all green and moving smoothly at this hour. Now, the threat of Irma is already changing the high school sports schedule here on the Sun Coast. Manatee County School District deciding to play this week's scheduled high school football games on Thursday instead of Friday. Venice High School's game at Charlotte High will also be moved to Thursday. The Sarasota County School District has canceled all Friday after school activities, meaning games will either be moved up or postponed. Also affected by the storm, the American Heart Association's Heart Walk. The event was supposed to take place on Saturday morning at Nathan Benderson Park. No word yet if it will be postponed or to another date. Some other scheduled events around the Sun Coast have also been canceled or postponed because of the storm. You can get a list of all those on our website. Just go to mysuncoast.com. And remember, you can always get up-to-the-minute updates on Hurricane Irma and current weather conditions across the Sun Coast by downloading the ABC7 weather and news apps. Once you download the apps, you'll get updates on the forecast, breaking news, and local stories right on your phone. Well, still to come in your Sun Coast news tonight, an ultimatum to Congress. President Trump's decision on an Obama-era policy that protects undocumented immigrants. And Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast, plus the latest track on Irma. And the best way to detox. It does not involve a juice or shake cleanse. We'll explain why in Health Smart. Hurricane season is here, and so is the ABC7 First Alert Hurricane Guide. This essential resource arms you with vital information you need to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Sun Coast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit, shelter locations, what to do with your pets, and important phone numbers. Visit MySunCoast.com and download the ABC7 First Alert Hurricane Guide. Brought to you by Batteries Plus, the Florida Lottery, and Sarasota Glass and Mirror. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I am creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah, yeah. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Our accredited staff will handle all of the Medicare paperwork for free. And best of all, your brace is shipped directly to your home for free. Don't let chronic lower back pain slow you down. Get moving and stay active with a medical-grade back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost. We also accept Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, Aetna, Humana, and other insurance. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace covered by Medicare? Find out for free. Call Back Brace America at 1-800-715-0835. That's 1-800-715-0835. 1-800-715-0835. If you're looking for a rewarding job you'll love, good news. The perfect job is just a click away. Go to mysuncoast.com slash job of the day. It's that easy. Stop searching and go to mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to find the perfect job for you. 
There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. The Trump administration announcing today it will be phasing out the DACA program that provides legal protections for some 800,000 young people illegally brought to the U.S. as children. Protests opposing that decision began even before the announcement. And as ABC's Emily Rao reports, the protests have been intensifying ever since. From the White House in Washington to Trump Tower in New York, high schoolers in Denver even staging a walkout, thousands of people protesting President Trump's decision. This is an attack against the entire immigrant community. The president didn't make the announcement himself on camera. Instead, it was Attorney General Jeff Sessions who called DACA an unconstitutional overreach of executive power by President Obama. It also denied jobs to hundreds of thousands of Americans by allowing those same illegal aliens to take those jobs. DACA protected some 800,000 young immigrants from deportation. The so-called DREAMers will start losing their legal status after a six-month grace period, many already fearing what comes next. They know where I live, what I do. In a statement today, President Trump said the DREAMers will not be a priority for deportation, then punted the problem to lawmakers. It's Congress's job to legislate. It's not the president's job to, to create law. It is time for us in Congress to do the right thing for America, the right thing for these young people and their families, and to pass the DREAM Act to make it the law of the land and to do it now. But the political football offering little comfort to the hundreds of thousands of immigrants, some now facing a forced return to countries they've never known. We're humans too. We live here. This is our homeland. Former President Obama promised to weigh in if DACA was ever rescinded. And this afternoon he did just that, calling it a cruel decision and saying it's time for Congress to protect the dreamers. Emily Rao, ABC News, Washington. Well, we have showed you uh, people getting ready for mm -hmm. what could be headed our way. And I think Bob and I were talking earlier that this is this is actually a really positive thing that people are preparing. And right. when right. and if attention. we have another storm, mm -hmm. We're going to be ready. Yeah, and we're still in uh, near the peak of hurricane season. We still right. have half the season to go. And typically the months that we have to worry about here, it, October and early November, we've, yeah. we've been hit before in those months. So I think it's a good thing that people are getting ready. They're checking their kit. Obviously, they know their evacuation plan. I've had a lot of calls, emails, Facebook posts about, uh, you know, do I know what zone I live in? Because there could be evacuations. I'm not saying that there are at this point. Right. And I think that's another thing that we have to stress is that this is not set in stone. I mean, yesterday the European model was over Miami. Mm -hmm. Today it's over Punta Gorda and also Fort Myers. So that's a big 80, 90 mile, a mile shift. And you have to understand the hurricane force winds are only about 60 to 70 miles out from the center. So it depends upon whether you'll get hurricane force winds or tropical storm force winds. So the point is, it's not the time to make decisions quite yet. Yeah. The decision time will come, I think, on Thursday. Thursday will be a big, a big day for us. Uh, as far as watches and warnings go, if it stays on that center line, uh, more than likely we'll get in a hurricane watch and then a hurricane warning uh, will be put in place, I think, Friday. And so then, that, Bob, what can also happen, I, I've seen happen in Texas where you evacuate east because you think it's coming right. here and then it heads east. That so that's one deal. reason why you, you have to get that plan, right. see, you know, a more and, certain path. And you, exactly. You don't make the decision quite yet. Should I go to the east? No, well, I could go to you the east. You could go to the east. Yeah, right. so just hold on a little bit. Relax. we got a little time with this one, but uh, still, it could be a potential dangerous storm. We can't gloss, gloss over that. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a look at what's going on with this system. Weather headlines read like this. Uh, with this particular storm, you need to go over your hurricane plan thoroughly and you should check your hurricane supply kit as well. Timing for the Sun Coast appears to be late Sunday and into Monday. This is one model. The European, and I want to show you, the European has been trending west as of late. We'll wait to see what the next one does. But this is bad for Cuba, very bad for Cuba. Uh, flood flood uh, advisories and also uh, flood uh, flash flooding would go on there, life-threatening flooding. But it would slow the hurricane down. On top of that, it would break up the circulation a little bit. So it would emerge more than likely as a Cat 1 
or possibly a Cat 2 as it makes its way. And it's going to have a hard time reorganizing, but this particular model shows it getting stronger again as it moves on in toward and just south of Fort Myers. And in this situation with the Euro, yes, we would get a tropical storm to hurricane force winds here on the low end of the hurricane. So probably category one hurricane force winds if you follow the Euro. But there's a lot of different models out there, not just the Euro and the GFS, as well as uh, some other ones. We have the Canadian model, which still takes it here into the western Gulf of Mexico. This would be good for us, but bad for uh, states to the north of us and to the west of us in that situation. Now, as far as the GFS model goes, this is the United States model, uh, taking it again now toward the east. Yesterday it was here. Today it's on the east coast, and this would still be dangerous for us in that we'd see tropical storm force winds if it follows that GFS uh, track. And uh, right now that would mean we wouldn't see the storm surge and the rainfall would be a little less. We'll still expect about 5 to 10 inches of rain with that situation. Well, here's the latest. You didn't see the top of the news. It's Category 5, expected to stay extremely strong as it makes its way toward Puerto Rico and the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. So the satellite imagery of it is just amazing. It looks uh, very symmetrical at this point and it is going to continue to move off to the west. There are the warnings and watches. This is the radius of the winds. Again, uh, the hurricane force winds could clip the northern edge of Puerto Rico as well as into the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. This trough of low pressure continues to dive. The reason why there's so much uncertainty with the forecast is how strong is this trough going to be as it makes its way to the south? And will it retreat quicker and if it does, that will cause the storm to be more so into the Gulf of Mexico in time. We have another one out there not to worry about. This is Jose. It's going to be an Atlantic storm, it appears, as it makes its way through time. And then we have Tropical Depression 13, which is going to be dancing around the Southwest Caribbean and eventually make its way on shore into Mexico. We'll get to the forecast quickly here. For Boulder, southeast winds turn to the west again throughout the evening. Same story for tomorrow. And the extended forecast shapes up like this. Obviously, all eyes in the tropics. And the time for us, bad weather would be Sunday and Monday. It will be breezy on Saturday with storms even around on Friday. Back to you. Thank you, Bob. In health news tonight, the new wave of medicine could be drugs that target aging. Mayo Clinic researchers are urging human clinical trials for senolytic drugs, which have largely been studied in animals. As we age, we accumulate senescent cells, which are damaged cells that stay in our body. They play a role in diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Senolytic drugs are designed to kill those problem-causing cells without harming healthy cells. They have also shown promising results in mice. If you think a juice cleanse is going to detox your body, think again. Our bodies are made to flush out toxins on their own. But if you want to give your body a reboot, eating the right foods and drinking enough water will help kickstart your digestion. Fiber-rich fruit, veggies, beans, and whole grains can aid in gut and liver function. Try to cut out processed, fried, and sugary foods, plus eat smaller portions. Also, exercise. Sweating helps you detox by boosting circulation throughout the body. And finally, get enough sleep. That will reduce stress and inflammation. Too much sitting has been linked with new health risks, but a new study shows when people, many health risks, but when people learn the consequences, they get up more. In a study published in PLOS One, one group of people attended counseling sessions about the dangers of being sedentary and ways to move more in their everyday life. Those participants decreased the leisure time they spent sitting down every day by 21 minutes. They increased their light intensity physical activity and the number of breaks in between sitting time. Fasting blood sugar levels were reduced and people maintained their leg muscle mass, whereas people in the control group actually lost muscle mass with all of that. At sitting. Coming up, sheriff's deputies called to Siesta Key for a bizarre shooting investigation. What detectives learned on the scene. Plus, a specific police unit dedicated to keeping students safe. What they're doing to cut down on the number of pedestrian accidents. Being the caregiver for someone you love is truly a blessing. But sometimes you can lose a part of yourself. To be your best, for them and for you, it's important to have time to be able to recharge your batteries. When you call Tidewell Hospice, they can give you a chance to do just that. And with the peace of mind of knowing your loved one is in the very best hands. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Need a light bulb? Batteries Plus Bulbs has a huge selection of LEDs starting as low as $1.49. The one inside the clothes dryer. Oh, you use the clothes dryer. 
Visit BatteriesPlus.com for a store near you. It's Lincoln Summer Sales Event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sport Utility for $269 per month or a 2017 MKZ for $299 per month. We have a great selection of certified pre-owned Lincolns. These vehicles have warranties up to 100,000 miles and come with complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury. Winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award. Serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We're located two miles north of the Sarasota to Bradenton Airport on US 41. Hi, I'm Joan London with A Place for Mom. Over the years, we've helped thousands of families find senior care, and today's senior living communities have never been better. With amazing amenities like movie theaters, exercise rooms and swimming pools, public cafes, bars and bistros, even pet care services. And nobody understands your options like the advisors at A Place for Mom. These are local expert advisors that will partner with you to find the perfect place and determine the right level of care, whether that's just a helping hand or full-time memory care. Best of all, it's a free service. Call today, a place for mom. You know your family, we know senior living. Together, we'll make the right choice. Call A Place for Mom right now to get our free ebook on financing senior care, as well as a free referral for senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-290-0352 that's 1-800-290-0352. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Keep up with the Suncoast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. Tonight we have new details on a shooting investigation on Siesta Key. Sarasota County Sheriff's deputies say a person was shot with a pellet gun this morning on Ocean Boulevard. Detectives say two people were fighting and a third person fired a pellet gun. The person shot was injured but refused to get medical treatment. The Sheriff's Office has not released any other information. A recent study names Florida one of the most dangerous states for pedestrians, with more than 5,000 people killed in the Sunshine State since 2005. Three students on the Sun Coast were hit by a car within the first two weeks of school, and Sarasota police say they constantly have to warn pedestrians to not jaywalk. That's why they've created a specific traffic unit that monitors school zones and busy roads, in hopes of reminding you that it's up to drivers and pedestrians to pay attention. If you're not in the designated crosswalk and you cross the street and you get hit by a car, it's your fault. Some advice for pedestrians, stay alert, look to your left and right and make sure you're crossing when you're safe. And for drivers, pay attention, stay off the roads and give yourself some extra time on your commute. We'll have much more on this story coming up on ABC 7 News at 7 a little later this evening. And still to come on your Suncoast News, a possible double whammy for some people living in Venice. Find out if the Mayaka River is expected to crest and flood homes again. That story coming up. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to Mesobook.com. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. 
Installed by a highly skilled team, G-Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G-Freed Flooring America. G-Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Live from our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is ABC 7 News at 5.30. Your Sun Coast News. We're here for you. First, we're going to get right over to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. We are taking a look at the path of Irma. Everyone concerned about where it will go? It, it, is, it is not set in stone at all at this point, correct, Bob? I think that's the focus, too, Haley. It needs to be. Uh, there's no real... Uh, defining factor that's going to direct this storm on day four and five right now that all the models are in consensus with. Right now there's a big spread, as I said earlier, west of Cuba to the east of Florida. That's the spread which is over 400 miles wide and this storm, the hurricane force winds, are at this point only around 60 miles out from the center. So that means that some people may not even get any of the winds uh, in that cone of uncertainty. Uh, right now, we know that the northern Leeward Islands are going to deal with the most uh, devastating storm they have ever experienced uh, with this particular one, Irma, as winds are up to 185, and it doesn't look like there's any kind of way this is going to go through an eye wall replacement before it has an impact late tonight and Wednesday morning on the islands. As you can see, uh, the dark and deep red right there are where the hurricane force winds are, and again, that extends out about 60 miles, the heaviest to the right of the center. And that's always the case. It's called the dirty side. And it looks like uh, the islands will miss the dirty side, but still, uh, it's all dirty when you got 185 mile an hour wind uh, around the uh, center of the storm. Again, here's the forecast path and track. Uh, again, it looks like Puerto Rico will get a big chunk of that, but the heaviest weather will stay to the north. Turks and Caicos, they're expecting up to a 15-foot storm surge with this. This is just an amazing storm surge you're expecting and anticipating in the southern Bahamas. Now, this is that cone of uncertainty that I, I want to stress here. This is uh, the center line, and a lot of people will focus only on the center line. We don't want you to do that. We want you to look at this as where all the different models are taking this storm in day four and five. So it could be actually right here, or it could be right here. Now, there is even a 20% chance that it could be outside of this cone as well. So it's not uh, totally set in stone that it would be 100% inside that cone. But you'll notice that all of Sarasota, Manatee, Charlotte, Hardy, and DeSoto counties are included in that cone of uncertainty at this point. And it looks as though uh, we will continue to monitor this very closely. We'll have a much better idea uh, coming up uh, late Wednesday and into early Thursday. You'll notice that all the models take it off to the west-northwest and then some move it north earlier than Florida, some a little bit later. And uh, again, it looks as though there, we'll just have to wait on this one as far as decision making goes, especially throughout the day on Wednesday. We'll keep a close watch on it. Well, much more on this coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. And as Hurricane Irma threatens Florida, local governments are doing their best to get ready. Tonight, there are concerns about the Mayaka River in Venice. Can it take any more water after last week's heavy rains? ABC 7's Christopher Brantley is joining us live from Venice with more on that tonight. Christopher. Good evening, guys, and the Mayaka River is already dangerously high, and there are serious worries down in Northport. If this storm brings much more rain with it, flooding could become a serious issue. It was a feeling of cautious optimism around the office of Richard Berman on Tuesday. He's the emergency operations manager for the city of Northport. We are aware 
Right now, we're watching the storm. They're watching closely. The big threat right now is the Mayaka River. With last week's heavy rain, the river is full. We don't have a whole lot to give. Uh, we're looking at anything over six or eight inches where we are, you know, starting to have some impact uh, on, our, on our roadways. The city is keen to remind folks, if you're staying here, get ready. With their emergency kits, with at least three to five days worth of non-perishable food. Also, three to five days of drinking water. Berman worries about a sense of complacency. We call it hurricane coma, where people think, well, it hasn't hurt in a long time. It's not going to hurt now. Just a little north, in Venice, they too are getting prepared. City government had a director's meeting this afternoon planning out how to deal with the storm. One big question is, will there be any evacuations? All those kind of determinations come from above, meaning Sarasota County Emergency Management. For now, some city projects are being postponed. The planning department is asking contractors to secure their job sites to lessen potential debris. It's too soon to say for sure what impacts we may feel, but Venice is planning on handing out sandbags to residents. We encourage people to do is um, be mindful of, of your neighbor and other people needing sandbags. Um, get only the amount that you need, a, a reasonable amount of sand and bags. And those sandbags will be available starting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. here in Venice. The two locations right now are right behind Venice City Hall and at the Venice Police Range at Wellfield Park at Pinebrook Park, which is just off of the island. There is no word yet, just yet, from the city of Northport whether they will be providing sandbags to their residents. Live in Venice, Christopher Brantley, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, Christopher, thank you. We have some more information, by the way, on sandbags across the area. Today, Big Earth Landscape Supply handing out free sand at its two locations in Bradenton and Palmetto. And then starting tomorrow, Manatee County crews will distribute sandbags from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at five different locations. Buffalo Creek Park in Palmetto, GT Bray Park in Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch Park, Stormwater Ops in Bradenton, the Rabonia Community Center in Palmetto. The county will also distribute sandbags on Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The city of Bradenton will also be handing out sandbags tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. They'll be at Bradenton Public Works and Utilities, but you must show proof that you live in the city and there is a limit of 10 sandbags per person. Palmetto Police Department also distributing sandbags. They'll be available tomorrow from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. at its headquarters, 818 10th Avenue West in Palmetto. There are uh, available, these are available for city residents, and again, an ID will be required to get those. And each person will be allowed 10 bags each. As Floridians brace for a potential hit from Hurricane Irma, the states of Texas and Louisiana are still recovering from that massive flooding of Harvey. ABC's Brad Milkey has an update. Hurricane Irma is now a dangerous Category 5 storm and the most powerful scene in the Atlantic in over a decade. It's bearing down on Puerto Rico and could potentially hit Florida later this week. In the Keys, visitors are under a mandatory evacuation order starting at sunrise Wednesday. This hurricane is far too powerful, poses far too great a threat for us to uh, delay actions uh, any longer. With the devastation from Hurricane Harvey still fresh in people's minds, residents in Florida are preparing for the worst. Supermarket shelves are being emptied with lines stretching out the door at some stores. We decided whether it comes or not, this is stuff we need and we can use for future so we don't have to go through this again. Even with the storm track uncertain, FEMA is getting ready, stockpiling more than 700,000 liters of water and 500,000 meals. The National Guard has been activated. Some schools are already planning to close, and airlines have added flights to get tourists out early. We'll just have to wait for that. the details of that turn to come into focus later in the week. While major flooding continues in Texas after Harvey, some cities are starting to get financial help as cleanup continues. Residents are worried about mold, mosquitoes breeding in standing water, and snakes along with other wildlife and receding water. Another cause for concern in Texas is the status of 11 toxic EPA Superfund sites that were inundated with water and could potentially leak dangerous chemicals. We are unaware of any uh, damage or danger that has occurred. And with all the work still to be done in neighborhoods like this, Governor Abbott is telling Congress not to forget about him. He says this disaster still requires a Texas-sized response. Brad Milkey, ABC News, Bel Air, Texas. 
The Dutch government is sending about 100 Marines to the Caribbean in anticipation of Hurricane Irma, St. Martin, St. Eustatius, and Saba are all relying on the Netherlands for defense. Two Dutch Navy ships are also sailing towards the islands to help rebuild after Irma has passed. And American Airlines is adding flights out of St. Martin, St. Kitts, and Nevis to help those who want to evacuate before the hurricane arrives. More flights to Miami will be available to travelers in addition to the ones that are already scheduled. American is also waiving change fees until Friday for passengers affected by the storm. The airline says it expects to make more flight changes as the storm approaches. Blood banks on the Sun Coast are asking for donations to help flood victims in Texas as well as stock up for those who could be affected by Hurricane Irma. Doctors Hospital hosted a blood drive today at the mall at University Town Center in Sarasota. The drive was a joint effort with Sarasota Orthopedic Associates. The hospital says it needs all blood types to help both Harvey and potential Irma so victims. right now the demand is being met. However, the next couple of days uh, we don't know what's going to happen. So we want to make sure that we have enough blood supplies on standby. So wherever the need is, we'll be ready and able to help quickly. The Suncoast Blood Bank also hosted a drive for Harvey victims yesterday. ABC 7 will have continuous coverage of Hurricane Irma's development track over the next few days. We also want to make, help you make sure that you and your family are prepared and ready for what may come. That's why we'll be airing our hour-long special called Surviving a Hurricane right here on ABC 7. The program offers all kinds of information about supply kits, shelters, evacuation routes, and so much more to help get you ready for the storm. It will air tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Thursday at 4 p.m. and then again on Friday in the morning at 9 a.m. You can also catch this special anytime that's convenient for you on our other platforms including Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Still to come on your site. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's We're going to have uh, new research on cell phone radiation. If pregnant women should be especially concerned about that exposure, straight ahead. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. If you're thinking about replacing your windows, what matters most to you? We found what matters is high performance. Our customers want energy efficient windows built for Florida weather. Windows that can stand everything from scorching sun to hurricanes. Our customers want windows that reflect their life, their lifestyle. Windows that will last a lifetime. We listen to our customers and as a result, we're growing. So if you're looking to replace your windows, stop here at New South Window. Buy more, save more. Volume discounts on four or more windows.
There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Expectant moms worry about a lot, like will using your cell phone hurt your baby while you're pregnant? Now there's new research that might help dial back that concern. ABC's Janae Norman explains. If you're expecting, you know what it's like to get advice and to be bombarded with do's and don'ts of taking care of your unborn baby. So when the suggestion arose that cell phone radiation might harm the development of babies in the womb, many moms to be heard about it and they may have worried. But is there really a connection? That's what researchers in Norway wanted to find out. Looking at more than 45,000 mother-child pairs, asking mothers if and how often they use their cell phones during their pregnancies, they then assessed the children at ages 3 and 5 to determine their language, communication, and motor skills. What they found? No evidence of harmful effects from their mom's cell phone use while pregnant. Rumors, of course, die hard, which means that this study may not completely shut down these fears. But this research means moms can rest assured that even if they use those cell phones, their little ones won't be worse for it. With this Medical Minute, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News. Now your ABC 7 first alert weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, a lot of people have been on social media today checking things out, obviously, and finding out this is a major Category 5 hurricane with winds up to 185 miles an hour, gusts to size 200, uh, one of the biggest storms ever recorded out in the Atlantic, and it continues to move and march toward the northern Leeward Islands with the uh, eye wall getting very close to the northern stretches of those islands right now. Puerto Rico, it looks like it will catch at least uh, the hurricane force winds in excess of 120 miles an hour, at least on the western edge of that. Uh, all the models are in agreement over the next uh, couple of days at least, but it gets to day four and five. It depends upon which model you look at to make the break to the north. All of them agree there is going to be a break to the north, and Florida being in the middle of that, and the hurricane center uh, is still putting out the advisories suggesting there's still a lot of uncertainty with where this storm is going to go. The error, by the way, uh, for day five is 200 miles either side of the center line. So it could be 200 miles to the east of the center or 200 miles west of the center. So if the hurricane force winds are only 90 miles uh, in diameter, then the possibility of uh, not much of Florida getting uh, those hurricane force winds if it goes on that more easterly scale. But this particular model, the Euro, is uh, not suggesting that it will move away from Florida, but it will move over Cuba. At least that's what it's saying. And it has been changing, flip-flopping back and forth over the uh, course of the past two days now. So if it goes over the mountains of Cuba, devastating and looks as though uh, life-threatening mudslides and flash flooding throughout that region, it will also disrupt the flow. One thing it will do, it will lose the energy at the center of that warm water, which is now about 90 degrees all throughout this region. So if it does go over Cuba, it's going to emerge off the coast of Cuba, more than likely downgraded to a Category 1 or 2 hurricane at that point. But it could gain some strength, but it's going to have a hard time getting back in order depending upon how long it will be over Cuba. And the particular European model goes right through southwest Florida near Naples, stretching through Fort Myers and eventually in eastern portions of Sarasota and Manatee counties. If that were the case and it follows that, then certainly we are going to have hurricane force winds here. The GFS, which had been on the west coast of Florida yesterday, is now shifting to where the European was yesterday. It's now on the east coast, uh, moving up in another dangerous situation as it would be out over the water in the Atlantic, gaining all that energy and just whipping it onto the east coast of Florida. So that would be the worst case scenario, scenario for uh, east coast of Florida at this point. So there's a lot, and I want to stress, there's a lot of uncertainty. Decisions really shouldn't be made quite yet. Uh, we should wait more so on Wednesday. We'll have a better idea as to when it's going to make that break. But boy, just a devastating storm down into the islands there, and especially in the Turks and Caicos. They are going to get uh, hammered by a storm surge, which will uh, be unprecedented, I think, as well as uh, just uh, winds up to 175 to 180 miles an hour. These are the islands that are under the hurricane warning right now. You see that? That main core right there, you see right there, is where the 175 mile an hour winds will be. And so it brushes the northern end of the uh, U.S. and British Virgin Islands and also very close to Puerto Rico. And it looks as though we could see those uh, very strong winds into Puerto Rico. The chances are small, but there's a chance we could see it. Look at this trough diving down. You can see it quite clearly extending all the way down through uh, into Oklahoma now and also all the way over into West Virginia. This will continue to sink southward, but if it retreats and high pressure builds in over the top of it, 
It may cut it off as a cutoff low, and if it does that, then the north push will be a little bit later. Now, as far as Jose is concerned, not much of a concern. It looks like uh, close to the islands once again, but this one's going to be an Atlantic storm. We'll stay out there in the Atlantic. And Tropical Depression number 13 is just going to meander down here in the southwest uh, Gulf of Mexico and then push off toward Mexico. Could cause some life-threatening flooding there as we move through time. Well, uh, for us, the radar picture is going to get more active, too. Not so much uh, this evening, but I think more so as we approach Thursday and Friday, and not from Irma, just uh, from the fact that we're going to see an increased moisture availability and the fact that we have a frontal system approaching to the north. Southeast winds for the remainder of the afternoon, uh, and again, a light chop. Same conditions for tomorrow. Winds and seas will deteriorate beginning late Thursday and into Friday. Low tide upcoming, 802. Sunset uh, just before 8. Now, the forecast tonight, isolated storm possible, 76 for low. Tomorrow, We'll have partly sunny skies, a 40% chance for storms. A good plan to start, a good idea, a good weather to go out there and start making your plan. And 90 degrees for your high. South winds turn to the west at 5 to 10. The extended forecast, better chances for rain on Thursday, scattered about 60 on Friday, and Irma possibly on Sunday and Monday. Back to you. Thank you, Bob. Time now to check on your first alert traffic for the drive home. Right now, traffic is backed up on I-75 in the north and southbound lanes from Fruitville Road south to Bee Ridge. The new CEO of Uber is wrapping up his first day on the job. Dara Khusrowshahi is an Iranian refugee raised in New York and previously Expedia's CEO. Under his leadership, Expedia's share price increased times six, at one point making him the highest paid CEO. He also drove the company's success by buying rival travel startups like Travago, Orbitz, and Travelocity. Entertainment news coming up next. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. The following message is brought to you by mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Predoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Predoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. Being the caregiver for my husband is truly a blessing, but sometimes it's easy to lose a part of myself. To be my best, for him and for me, it's important to have time to be able to recharge. When I called Tidewell Hospice, they gave me the chance to do just that. They helped me find the time to care for myself, all the while with the peace of mind of knowing my husband is in the very best hands. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at CaliforniaClosets.com. Some of your favorite celebrities are getting together to raise money for victims of Hurricane Harvey. 
Beyonce, Blake Shelton, Barbara Streisand, and Oprah, just as some of the many famous faces you'll see headlining the hand-in-hand -hand benefit telethon. It will benefit organizations like the United Way of Greater Houston, Habitat for Humanity, and Save the Children. Other celebrities like George Clooney, Jamie Foxx, and Julia Roberts will also make an appearance with taped or live messages. The concert will air right here on ABC7 next Tuesday, beginning at 8 p.m. Just a day after the exciting baby news for the British Royals, a ruling is handed down in a high-profile paparazzi case involving the Duchess of Cambridge. A French court has ruled that six journalists invaded the Duchess's privacy when they published topless photos of her in a newspaper. Three photographers and three newspaper executives must pay more than $59,000 in damages to the royal couple. The photos were published in 2012, just a year after the couple was married. Lady Gaga is feeling a little under the weather. The singer postponing her concert in Montreal last night, citing laryngitis and a respiratory infection. She apologizes to her fans on Twitter, saying she had gotten sick in the rain last week. She also plans to send pizza to those fans who have gathered outside her hotel in that Canadian city. Angelina Jolie plans to get back in front of the camera soon. The actress tells a Hollywood reporter she took more than a year off because of her family situation her messy split from Brad Pitt, and to take care of her kids. She says she'll most likely be working on a sequel to Maleficent. The new Miss America will have to go through one more hurdle for her crown. The final seven contestants will now have to go through two rounds of on-stage interviews, although this is video from Miss USA, but first they will answer a personality question, and then the top five contestants will answer a current events question. You can catch the finale of the competition on Sunday night at 9 o'clock right here on ABC7. And we'll be rooting for Miss Florida. Miss Florida. She's awesome. Yeah, got to root for Miss Florida. All right, we'll, we'll be right back.
The approaching storm also fueling price increases at the gas pump while prices are going up. Governor Scott suspending tolls across the entire state of Florida so people can better prepare for the storm, get hurricane supplies, and quickly evacuate if necessary. ABC 7's Bo Beth Yates has continuing coverage of Irma preparations. Storm preparation continues on the Sun Coast as area residents rush to gas stations, filling up their tanks and getting last minute supplies. I am currently filling up my car and then I just purchased two cases of Dasani water. Thousands all across the Sun Coast had the same idea. Many filling up their cars, trucks, portable containers, and anything that use gasoline. A lot of preparation to do, and gas is step number one. I just wanted to make sure I have gas. I mean, the gas stations could blow away, and you might not have any gas for a couple of weeks. But as residents fill up, gas prices have also seen a drastic hike, jumping almost 40 cents per gallon in some areas. According to FloridaStateGasPrices.com, the mobile station at the intersection of Bee Ridge and McIntosh is among the most expensive, charging about $2.79 per gallon for regular unleaded. Still, the average price of gasoline in the area is about $2.69, which is also up about 10 cents in less than a week. It's ridiculous. I was just buying here this morning. It was $2.19. It's almost $2.70 a gallon now this afternoon. Now the storm's, you know, coming and everybody's running around trying to get supplies. I think it's kind of uh, a terrible thing to prey upon your community like that, you know. But an area gas station owner says part of the increase is due to their suppliers, who've also increased the price they're charging stations. We're going to try to keep it as low as we can. You know, we uh, some some people do take advantage, but I don't think so. I mean, with, with the way things are right now, hopefully everybody will be in line and just uh, do their best to help everybody anyway. In addition, Ahmad says not to worry about shortages because most gas stations are equipped with backup generators to keep their pumps running during and after the storm. We're going to try our best to be in the place. And if it gets really dangerous for the employees, then we'll have to shut down. But most likely, things will be all right. While the threat of a hurricane increases the possibility of gas shortages, many of the gas stations we spoke to say they are confident that they have enough supply to last them beyond the storm if it hits and even into the next week. Bob Beth Yates, ABC 7, your Suncoast News.
there's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. It's Lincoln's summer sales event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKX Sport Utility for $349 per month or Lincoln's flagship, the 2017 Continental, for $449 per month. We have a great selection of certified pre-owned Lincolns. These vehicles have warranties up to 100,000 miles and come with complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1970. The ABC7 First Alert Hurricane Guide. Download yours today. Some Suncoast families are choosing to evacuate and get out of Irma's potential path. Why emergency managers say some people should leave sooner than later. And those who are staying are stocking up on supplies, what they're picking to prepare. Gas prices are continuing to climb. Why you should fill up your tank before prices get even higher. Your Suncoast News starts now. Live from our studios on Florida's Suncoast, this is ABC 7 News at 6. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. And I'm Haley Bilgas. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our top story tonight, Hurricane Irma, the Category 5 storm, now bringing 185 mile an hour winds. Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan is joining us with the details on this storm in our first alert forecast. Unprecedented. This is the storm. Uh, it looks like a very well-defined storm. Look at the symmetry of it. Uh, when you see something like this, you know you have a Category 5 hurricane with a well-defined eye. At times, this eye can get so small and contracted because of its intensity that it can develop a secondary eye. When it goes through that secondary eye wall, a changeover, it can lose some strength, but it doesn't appear that it's going to do that before it hits the northern Leeward Islands. Top winds at 185 and gusts as high as 200 miles an hour in that center as it makes its way off to the west. And you can see it is now getting very close late tonight and into early morning hours on Wednesday is when it's expected to make landfall in the northern Leeward Islands and then eventually heading off toward the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. This is the latest cone as of 5 o'clock and it's the full-blown forecast and it looks as though it's going to continue on this west-northwesterly course. And then all the uncertainty comes into play. There's a lot of different factors at work here and the spread from here to here, very great distance. So don't focus on the center line so much. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and take the center line off here. You can see it's 140 mile hour wind, so it's expect, expected, but it could go over Cuba and you'll see that in the European forecast. Again, uh, we're going to show you the distance as far as this goes. It could be anywhere within inside this cone all the way down to Cuba. Look at the distance there, over 500 miles. So if it's down here, obviously it wouldn't have much of an impact if it continues on that westerly course. If it's here, it's still over, what, a couple hundred miles away from us. So we would not even have uh, hurricane force winds in this regard, tropical storm force winds. But right now, the most favored area is right into the center. So uh, don't, again, focus on the center. That's the most likely area. However, uh, there's a lot of confusion. And so the hurricane center is kind of expanding that cone a little bit, suggesting that uh, the models are all over the place on day four and five. And you can see that from all the individual forecast models. Uh, there's Florida right there, if you can barely see it. But a lot more models now are trending to the east of the state, which is better for us here. Not as uh, good for the east coast of Florida, uh, but still a few keep it out here in the Gulf of Mexico, while a few, this is interesting to note, a few more models take it right over Cuba. So now it's a Category 5. If it were to make its way over Cuba, it would be devastating for them with mudslides and also uh, loss of life, life-threatening mudslides there. And then it would emerge as a much weaker hurricane and it would take its time to regenerate into a strong hurricane. So. Uh, that could be a player as well in time. This is just one forecast model. We'll show you the GFS in a little bit. Uh, you can see it goes through Cuba on this. This is Saturday. Uh, here is Sunday near the Key West area, Sunday evening. And then as it progresses off to the north toward, it uh, looks like Naples and Sanibel, and then eventually moves across the spine of the state. But that's just one model, and we don't want to focus on just one model at this point. We'll have more in the forecast coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. 
Thank you, Bob. While most Suncoast families are getting their hurricane kits in check, some are choosing to leave Florida altogether. For those living in mobile homes or maybe without homes without hurricane proof window shutters, your best option may be to evacuate. ABC 7's Erica Jackson joins us live from one area off of the interstate to explain why it may be in your best interest to leave sooner rather than later. Erica? Good evening, Haley and Scott. If you choose to leave Florida, popular roads like I-75 will become more crowded as we get closer to the weekend. So if you plan on heading out of state, you should take a road heading east, like State Road 64 or 70 or 72, and then find a road that's less crowded heading north. But local officials say you don't have to travel hundreds of miles to stay safe. I want to make sure that we're in a good place to react to that when we discover if she's going east or west. Tom Lelio is getting ready to pack up four of his kids and drive up to South Carolina ahead of Hurricane Irma's threat on Florida. But two of his family members are staying behind. His wife, Natalie, and their newborn daughter, Evangeline Joy. Our family has been kind of separated for the past few weeks with my wife at the hospital and me with the boys. Evangeline was born premature just two weeks ago, five weeks ahead of Natalie's scheduled due date. She's getting stronger every day and now weighs three pounds, five ounces. The Lelios believe Evangeline's progression will continue if she stays in the NICU at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. And Natalie will remain by her side as the rest of the family evacuates. If I have a choice to go somewhere else and not have to put my family through no power or just scary thunderstorms with our kids because they're little, I'd rather not put them through that. We want people to, you know, have fuel in their vehicle, take their supplies with them, Think about where you're going to go and do that planning. Sarasota County Emergency Management Chief Ed McCrane knows a lot of people are getting ready to get out of Florida in case Irma hits the Sunshine State, but says evacuees don't have to travel hundreds of miles as long as they get away from the shoreline and find a safe shelter. Get out of flood zones, get out of mobile homes, and go to a safe building. Evangeline will have to extend her stay at Sarasota Memorial if the hurricane hits Florida, but her father is optimistic about their safety. Our family is going to be fine. I really trust in that. We do need to point out that no evacuations have been put in place for our area as of now, but if there are any issued, you can expect all evacuation routes to be more crowded because drivers from the south counties like Lee or Monroe or in Collier, they'll be using these roads to head up north. Reporting live in Sarasota County, Erica Jackson, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, Erica, thank you. The approaching storm also fueling price increases at the gas pump while prices are going up. Governor Scott suspending tolls across the entire state of Florida so people can better prepare for the storm, get hurricane supplies, and quickly evacuate if necessary. ABC 7's Bo Beth Yates has continuing coverage of Irma preparations. Storm preparation continues on the Sun Coast as area residents rush to gas stations, filling up their tanks and getting last minute supplies. I am currently filling up my car and then I just purchased two cases of Dasani water. Thousands all across the Sun Coast had the same idea. Many filling up their cars, trucks, portable containers and anything that use gasoline. A lot of preparation to do and gas is step number one. I just wanted to make sure I have gas. And the gas stations could blow away and you might not have any gas for a couple weeks. But as residents fill up, gas prices have also seen a drastic hike, jumping almost 40 cents per gallon in some areas. According to FloridaStateGasPrices.com, the mobile station at the intersection of Bee Ridge and McIntosh is among the most expensive, charging about $2.79 per gallon for regular unleaded. Still, the average price of gasoline in the area is about $2.69, which is also also up about 10 cents in less than a week. It's ridiculous. I was just buying here this morning. It was 219. It's almost 270 a gallon now this afternoon. Now the storm's you know coming and everybody's running around trying to get supplies. I think it's kind of uh, a terrible thing to prey upon your community like that, you know. But an area gas station owner says part of the increase is due to their suppliers, who've also increased the price they're charging stations. We're going to try to keep it as low as we can. You know, we. Uh, some, some people do take advantage, but I don't think so. I mean, with, with the way things are right now, hopefully everybody will be in line and just uh, do their best to help everybody anyway. In addition, Ahmad says not to worry about shortages because most gas stations are equipped with backup generators to keep their pumps running during and after the storm. We're going to try our best to be in the place. And if it gets really dangerous for the employees, then we'll have to shut down. But 
most likely things will be all right. While the threat of a hurricane increases the possibility of gas shortages, many of the gas stations we spoke to say they are confident that they have enough supply to last them beyond the storm if it hits and even into the next week. Bo Beth Yates, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Bo Beth. Irma is now the most powerful storm ever recorded in the Atlantic Ocean. People are preparing by stocking up on hurricane supplies, including bottled water and food. We've been seeing some empty store shelves across the Sun Coast. Many customers walking up and down the aisles and not finding a lot of the items they had on their list. Within hours of opening, Home Depot had run out of water and certain sizes of plywood. They also sold out of generators, items including batteries and flashlights going quickly. Home Depot Assistant Manager Eric Thayer says, the recent foot traffic is an indication many are scared they do want to be prepared, but he expects an increase in customers even within the next few days. We've increased our staffing potential for Home Depot employees, allowing the time and the, the energy and the capacity to service the customers. Uh, we have shipments due in today, so our distribution centers are aware and still making those shipments to us daily. As for the Home Depot in Sarasota, the manager tells us there were shipments not only coming in today for supplies, but throughout the week for residents who need those generators or water, whatever it may be. So don't panic now. More supplies are coming. I was talking to uh, my wife earlier today. She was at Sam's Club mm -hmm. early this mm -hmm. morning, and uh, somebody there told her that they had 12 generators to start the morning yeah. when they opened at 7 a.m. And by 7.05, they were all sold, sold out. Yep. I believe it. Still to come on your Suncoast News, Governor Scott is turning to the federal government to prepare for Irma, how President Trump is helping Florida make a plan. Now you can win a $50 visa. It's easy. Just enter the word of the week at mysuncoast.com. This week's word is college. We'll pick a winner each week. Good luck. Game on, Suncoast. Get scores and highlights from the area's top high school matchups on Football Friday Night, just after the news at 11.15. Sponsored by your local Honda dealers. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. I dropped it on the floor, and he stepped on it. No matter how you broke your smartphone, there's only one smart way to fix it. Batteries plus bulbs. Schedule your repair at batteriesplus.com. What if you had a medical emergency away from home? My chest hurts. I can't breathe. What you need is Mobile Help, America's premier mobile medical alert system. Most systems only work at home, but with Mobile Help, you get help outside the home with coverage nationwide on one of the largest cellular networks at the press of a button. Call the number on your screen for a free full color brochure. We'll send you everything you need, including this base station, the patented mobile device, and the waterproof pendant and wrist button. You can also add the fall button that automatically detects falls and signals help. Call today and receive a risk-free 30-day trial. There is no equipment to buy and no long-term contract. For a limited time, you will also receive a free emergency key box with your plan purchase. Remember, mobile help keeps you safe coast to coast. Call 1-800-916-8638. That's 1-800-916-8638. Check out mysuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com.
Governor Scott is turning to the federal government to help prepare for Irma's impact. All 7,000 National Guard members will be reporting for duty Friday morning. 13 helicopters and more than 1,000 tactical trucks are on standby. He also spoke with President Trump earlier today. I talked to President Trump uh, last night. He's um, committed all of the uh, federal resources that uh, are necessary. I just a few minutes ago requested President Trump declare a pre-landfall emergency for the entire state of Florida. That's going to free up uh, much needed federal funding and, and assets. The governor's main message is for everyone to hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. And coming up next, Bob will be back with your first alert weather forecast. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. If you're thinking about replacing your windows, what matters most to you? We found what matters is high performance. Our customers want energy efficient windows built for Florida weather. Windows that can stand everything from scorching sun to hurricanes. Our customers want windows that reflect their life, their lifestyle. Windows that will last a lifetime. We listen to our customers and as a result, we're growing. So if you're looking to replace your windows, stop here at New South Window. Buy more, save more. Volume discounts on four or more windows. It's Lincoln Summer Sales Event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sport Utility for $269 per month or a 2017 MKZ for $299 per month. We have a great selection of certified pre-owned Lincolns. These vehicles have warranties up to 100,000 miles and come with complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury. Winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award. Serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We're located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US 41. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. It's not just a donation. It's a warm blanket. It's a bottle of clean water. It's a roof and a bed. It's knowing someone cares. It's feeling safe. You said today that's better than yesterday. Every dollar you can spare helps so much more than you can imagine. Please donate now. Your help is urgently needed. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Well, I had a chance to visit the fourth graders down in Lamarck Elementary in Northport this morning, and I went to our website to show them uh, how you can keep up to date with all the latest on Irma, and I saw the satellite imagery, and I said, this has got to be a, a, a five hurricane, and sure enough, the 8 o'clock advisory came out, and it was certainly a category five hurricane. Winds up to 185 miles an hour now, and wind gusts as high as 200 miles an hour. A lot of social media folks asking questions, wanting to know, 
Should we evacuate? Should we leave? No. The, quite, the answer to that is no. If you have obligations here, you shouldn't leave uh, quite yet. If you are in a zone that's going to be asked to evacuate, it would be zone A or zone B or C or D. That's how they'll be announced. And you have to know your zone. In order to know your zone, you have to go to the county that you live in and type in and Google your county with know your zone, and you'll be able to put your address in there and find out exactly what zone you're in. So when the evacuations, if and when they are ordered, you'll know if it includes you. So I want to make sure I stress that uh, quite clearly. But if you're, you have no obligations here, certainly you can get out of here and alleviate some of the stress of the cars and traffic uh, from some of the people that are told to leave. Now, look at this. This is uh, just an unbelievable looking storm, symmetrical, all in appearance. Conditions can remain favorable for this to stay as a 185 mile an hour storm as it makes its way through St. Kitts and also Anguilla. Uh, up there near the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, they could get hammered by this intense catastrophic storm. And then down the road, it could be the Turks and Caicos as well as Cuba. Uh, right now, go over your hurricane plan, check your hurricane supplies. Timing for the Sun Coast is late Sunday and Monday at this time. That could change. Uh, looks like watches and warnings, watches will more than likely go into effect for us if it comes on this westerly course, uh, would be uh, more than likely Thursday. Or early Friday, and then warnings coming in on early Saturday. But that again remains to be seen, so keep in touch. Uh, all the models suggest a northerly turn. Some models take it right through Cuba. Mountainous terrain there will break up the circulation and take away the energy, which is the warm water of the southwest Atlantic. If that were the case, it would be downgraded, uh, much lower than it is now, more than likely a Category 1 by the time it exits off the western tip. But uh, there's so many ifs with this storm. I've not seen that many uh, in all the years that I've covered them because uh, there's a low-pressure trough coming down. That could become a cutoff low. And then there's a high pressure to the northwest of that, which will kind of force the storm a little bit uh, to the uh, east and south. And then there's also the fact that trough could be a little deeper and stronger. The GFS is thinking that that trough will be strong. It keeps it on the east coast of Florida and carries it up. And that would be a worst case scenario for the east coast because they did all experience those hurricane force winds. We indefinitely would get tropical storm force winds if it were that close. But we don't want to focus on just one model. I want to show you that because you see that all over the internet right now, all the different forecast models. We showed you the European earlier. This is the forecast path and track. It's going to stay as a major hurricane if it stays over water, and it will do that all the way up to the Turk and Caicos. The storm surge at Turk and Caicos expected to be up to 15 to 20 foot storm surge, the highest they've ever experienced if that comes true. It will be a four here on day four. Uh, this is again Saturday at 2 p.m., but if it's over Cuba, it won't be a four. And then the center line shows it near Key West, but again, don't focus on the center line because I seriously believe it's going to flip flop back and forth once again as we move through time, both on Saturday and even into early Sunday. You can see that the U.S. Uh, Virgin Islands are expected to get hammered by this thing as it makes its way to the northwest. For boaters, tomorrow looks good. And for this evening, not too bad. West winds at 5 to 10 knots. Seas will be 1 to 2 feet with a light chop. And the low tide at 8.02. Sunset will be at 7.46. The forecast tonight, a few isolated storms, not out of the question, otherwise 76. Typical summer-like weather tomorrow, 40% chance for storms, 90 or high, and obviously increasing rain chances on Friday and Saturday. Not due to Irma, but just a front. Irma, possibly on Sunday and Monday. We'll be right back after this. This week, President Trump now facing several critical tests. The devastation of Hurricane Harvey, escalating tension with North Korea, and the looming Russia investigation. With stakes this high, this is where America turns. World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Rose takes her volunteering for Tidewell Hospice very seriously. But she knows how to have fun, too. And that's what she brings when we're invited to visit patients as part of Tidewell's pet therapy program. People love to see her. She really brightens their day. She makes people smile. And in end-of-life care, a smile can be a wonderful gift. Tidewell Hospice. It's more than you think. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G. Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G. 
Gfried Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. If you're not in control, then who is? Live above the influence. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Sometimes life doesn't go in a straight line. Hurricanes too, right? Exactly. You might have several careers and pursue several dreams over your lifetime. ABC 7's Linda Carson introduces us to an amazing Suncoast woman who has traveled many highways, loved many children, and built a happy life. Kathy Douglas and her husband Jeff are both Army veterans. They met while working at a restaurant back home in Lexington, Kentucky. Then they moved to Florida. My whole family migrated down this way because it doesn't snow here. Kathy was a dental hygienist, her husband Jeff, a software developer. They had three biological children, the youngest just five, 15 years ago when they first became foster parents. We spent 15 years fostering kids in Sarasota, Manatee, and um, DeSoto. We started taking kids with medical issues um, probably about 13 years ago. So we had a lot of children, you know, a lot of drug addicted babies, um, children with AIDS, just different. Um, uh, we had one with brittle bone disease. Kathy had her hands full. It was a lot of work and it was, you know, other than having my own kids, probably the most rewarding thing that I've ever done in my life. They adopted the first baby they fostered with medical needs. We knew that nobody was going to love her like we did and take care of her like we did, so we decided that we had to keep her. They also adopted a 10-year-old with medical needs and her 5-year-old sister. Not long after that, they hit the road. We decided that we wanted to travel, so we rented out our house for a couple of years. We got an RV and we decided to tour the country, so we spent the next two years, well, a little more than that, um, touring the country. They visited 40 states and a lot of breweries because their oldest son Scott loves to brew. One day after our son had been brewing quite a bit, um, we said, you know, wouldn't it be cool one of these days if we opened up a brewery and Scott brewed our beer? So they came back home and opened the Three Keys Brewery and Restaurant. It's a family business. Now our kids are 10, 13, 15, 23, 26, and 30. They brew their own beer and make their own food for the restaurant. The younger kids, you know, help out too. The, the two little girls are in charge of making spent grain soaps and our oldest daughter makes our pizzas on Monday nights, you know, so um, we all just work together. And her life lesson? Not to be afraid of things, because if you are afraid to jump out and take a leap and go outside of the box, you might miss some of the biggest blessings that in life. You can find Kathy, her husband Jeff, and their son Scott here at the Three Keys Brewery most days. Come in and say hello and learn more about this amazing woman's incredible story. Linda Carson, ABC7, your Suncoast News. That is incredible. Wow. Thank you, Linda. All right, Bob's going to be uh, monitoring the storm. Yes. The latest coming up at 7. Absolutely. MySuncoast.com and our Facebook page as well as your app. Download the weather app, app, WWSB. While most Suncoast families are getting their hurricane kits in check, some are choosing to leave Florida altogether. For those living in mobile homes or maybe without homes without hurricane-proof window shutters, your best option may be to evacuate. ABC 7's Erica Jackson joins us live from one area off of the interstate to explain why it may be in your best interest to leave sooner rather than later. Erica? Good evening, Haley and Scott. If you choose to leave Florida, popular roads like I-75 will become more crowded as we get closer to the weekend. So if you plan on heading out of state, you should take a road heading east, like State Road 64 or 70 or 72, and then find a road that's less crowded heading north. But local officials say you don't have to travel hundreds of miles to stay safe. I want to make sure that we're in a good place to react to that when we discover if she's going east or west. Tom Lelio is getting ready to pack up four of his kids and drive up to South Carolina ahead of Hurricane Irma's threat on Florida. But two of his family members are staying behind. 
his wife Natalie, and their newborn daughter, Evangeline Joy. Our family has been kind of separated for the past few weeks with my wife at the hospital and me with the boys. Evangeline was born premature just two weeks ago, five weeks ahead of Natalie's scheduled due date. She's getting stronger every day and now weighs three pounds, five ounces. The Lelios believe Evangeline's progression will continue if she stays in the NICU at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. And Natalie will remain by her side as the rest of the family evacuates. If I have a choice to go somewhere else and not have to put my family through no power or just scary thunderstorms with our kids because they're little, I'd rather not put them through that. We want people to, you know, have fuel in their vehicle, take their supplies with them, Think about where you're going to go and do that planning. Sarasota County Emergency Management Chief Ed McCrane knows a lot of people are getting ready to get out of Florida in case Irma hits the Sunshine State, but says evacuees don't have to travel hundreds of miles as long as they get away from the shoreline and find a safe shelter. Get out of flood zones, get out of mobile homes and go to a safe building. Evangeline will have to extend her stay at Sarasota Memorial if the hurricane hits Florida, but her father is optimistic about their safety. Our family is going to be fine. I really trust in that. We do need to point out that no evacuations have been put in place for our area as of now, but if there are any issued, you can expect all evacuation routes to be more crowded because drivers from the south counties like Lee or Monroe or in Collier, they'll be using these roads to head up north. Reporting live in Sarasota County, Erica Jackson, ABC 7, your Suncoast News.